Meep! We have so much magma, it's about time we do something with it. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to try to make use of all of this magma, which is coming from one volcano, two, three volcanoes, and a hydrogen rocket that is boosted by salt melting regolith into more magma, that crazy thing that we've been working on right there. Yes, we have lots of magma. So today we're going to be boiling uh, crude oil into petroleum. That has a lot of advantages. Matter of fact, I have a whole playlist dedicated to exploring that idea right there. Uh, and essentially, it is a big upgrade from what we've been currently doing down here, which is using the oil refinery. So Kitty's been running this for a long time now, and that actually converts our crude oil source into petroleum, which I've been using for plastic production. Also been firing up rockets and all the jet suits. To be completely honest with you, we don't need more petroleum. However, just because we don't need something doesn't mean we shouldn't do it because it's cool. Because let's be honest, none of this or this is even really necessary. I mean, let's face it, me, we've pretty much beaten the game at this point. And we're just looking for stuff to do, huh? Speaking of which, I noticed this just the other day. Look at this. The amount of carbon dioxide inside of here is 58 kilograms. What? Currently, there's 322 tiles in this area, which means we have eight tons of carbon dioxide in this one silo. That's a lot of carbon dioxide. I should probably focus on slicksters. Well, whatever. The point is, when we convert this crude oil into petroleum, that will allow us to run a lot more petroleum generators, which in turn allows us to run a lot more, uh, to get a lot more water out of them. So if we take a look at the petroleum generator right here, we know that we are waiting. <laughs> we get 500 grams per second of carbon dioxide, not like we need more of that, or 750 grams per second of polluted water. Again, not like we really need that either. But just because we don't need it doesn't mean we don't want it, right? So that's a good enough reason for me. Let's go ahead and build our petroleum boiler right here. Now I have kind of a unique setup in that I have this automated volcano thing. Again, if you haven't seen that, there's going to be a link to it up there. Uh, this is an automated system to process all of the stuff that comes out of this volcano or any volcano, and then you can transfer it however you want, whether using doors, direct contact, or in my case, I'm just using shipping rails. So the system that I'm thinking about here is going to run at about 400 degrees Celsius or above that, I should say, above 400 degrees Celsius. And then it will drop down here and we can actually ship out the rest of the igneous rock that's coming out of here and run that through a secondary system that's going to do some other things as well. So the cool thing about this system here is it allows us to temperature control uh, the minimum temperature here. So I'm going to set this to be everything above, let's say 410 degrees right there. So that's as cold as it's going to get or maybe a little bit higher, depending on what we want right there, maybe 500. There's actually a limit we can't go above because then we'd end up in sour gas, uh, which isn't the end of the world. We can make a sour gas boiler if we really want it to. So at any rate, we need to get this thing up and running. So first thing I'm going to do here, since I set that temperature to be below 500 degrees Celsius, we're going to see that this system is going to run for the very first time. So this door is going to open up. We're going to drop all that liquid onto here. And just like that, the door is going to close, sealing off all of that magma. And all of the heat's going to find its way down here. However, since we're not shipping anything through, it's pretty much just going to stay here. So the doors open up, the igneous rock falls down. And now this thing is at 600 degrees Celsius. And we can see that we are still, we're not quite up to temperature just yet, but pretty soon we will be. So I've already prepared a blueprint for the sour gas boiler I want to build, and that's going to happen right here. But before we do this, let me take you to the test lab where I developed this little design. All right, so here we have three different petroleum boiler ideas. So I started off with this one down here, just kind of playing around with the idea of potentially using a cooling loop like this that actually just flows around and around like that to kind of take the heat out of the petroleum here and cool and heat up the crude oil that's flowing in. This protects our pump over here, which is made out of steel uh, from actually being damaged from the really, really hot petroleum that comes out of here at about 400 degrees Celsius. So the thing I like about this design here is that it does kind of allow for a very compact system. However, I think the liquid I would have to use inside of here might be super coolant as compared to petroleum. Because what I found is that if I make this much smaller than where I'm at right now, this liquid pump runs the risk of overheating. 
but it is kind of an interesting idea in, in that we can take the heat out of here, we can warm up the crude oil, and then we could potentially take whatever residual heat we have from this, which is 186, we might be able to actually get that a little bit colder over here, maybe running a steam turbine or something like that. So while this system is interesting, I decided to abandon it for something a little bit more simple. So that brings me up to this one right here, which has a very kind of traditional setup in that we're just running a liquid pipe, which contains our crude oil in a counterflow system. So a counterflow system has the hottest on one end and the coldest on the other, and they kind of run past each other. This allows you to have the lowest temperatures over here and the highest temperatures over there, which is good for us because we want to protect the pump and we want the temperatures out here to be as low as possible, and we want the temperatures over here to be as high as possible, so that way we can run a lot of stuff through this and get a lot of the energy out. So it's the correct arrangement for what we're trying to do here. So this represents a very compact build in that it doesn't take up much space at all. We're really only talking about a volume of about 120 tiles or though, that's six tall, 20 long. You can actually uh, get rid of a lot of these tiles right here. You don't even need those. And you can bring in your heat however we want. In my case, it's going to be a conveyor rail that's running underneath here. The other thing about this system here is that it's nice and stable. Um, so there's two conditions that we can run into here. One, we run out of crude oil. What happens when that when we run out of crude oil? Um, and the other thing is what happens when we run out of heat and have to restart it? So for example, if we were to run this very, very low, and we could see that the temperature now is saying, okay, we've, we've absorbed all the heat that we can down here, and we can no longer get over 400 degrees Celsius. What happens then? Well, we need this system to be able to pause and not just bring in more and more and more crude oil, because what would happen then is we'd end up with crude oil that would overflow here and then into the pipe and all that stuff and then that would never change. And we'd end up with a system that just kind of becomes mixed and we don't want that. We want everything here to be petroleum. So that brings us to a really unique thing that happens here between crude oil and petroleum. When we take a look at a spot of crude oil here, you can see that it's maximum amount per tile is right around 886 or so, once you're a few tiles deep. Or if you're near the top, it's 869, right around there. However, when we look at a general tile of petroleum, like this right here, you can see that it's 740 kilograms. So there's a difference in the amount of volume that can actually fit in one tile. So the trick to this sensor right here is that it is set just above the petroleum limit but below the crude oil limit. And because of that, we can use this hydro sensor here to turn off a liquid shutoff. Therefore, we don't continue to bring in more and more crude oil. So I have this sensor set for 741 kilograms, and you can see the amount that actually stops here. It's 784 kilograms. So it's less than one full tile of crude oil, but it's more than one full tile of petroleum. So when the heat comes back around and we can actually put more into this and start boiling off more crude oil into petroleum. So if I say above 400 here, that door will close, the temperatures are going to start to come up and we're going to see this then take up more space over here and it will start to push that petroleum down the tube. And since the amount that fits in this one sensor right here, that will then allow this liquid shut off to turn back on to bring in more crude oil. So there we go, it just turned into petroleum and we are now below that limit and more and more crude oil. So that's what makes this system safe. That one sensor right there, that's the most important one. So the automation looks like this. We have the output sensor set below 741 and then the temperature here is above 400 degrees. You can play around with this number a little bit and go a little bit higher if you want to. Now this here represents a fairly small system in that the temperatures that are coming out here are, they're, they're okay. So we have 250 degrees output temperature for our petroleum, which is a quite a bit colder than what we have uh, happening over here. So this is 400 all the way down to 250. And then the temperatures that are flowing in are right around 300 or so degrees Celsius. So while that's great, it would be nice if this thing was a little bit more efficient. So in order to improve that, I need to make this whole loop longer. So I was inspired by some work that Francis John here, fellow YouTuber made. I like his little cooling snakes here. So I decided to employ that in my design. So after that, I reworked this design into this one right here. So it just has a longer snake. So what we're essentially doing is we're increasing the amount of time that we have in order for those temperatures to kind of uh, go back and forth between the two different liquids that are running past each other. So therefore the output temperature now is about 180 degrees and the input temperature is 336. 
One thing to be aware of here is that we don't necessarily want things to get too close to 400 degrees because if it does get too close to 400 degrees and we are coming out of a low temperature setup right here, the temperature tends to spike up because we're not moving as much crude oil through this. So there's a little bit of safety of margin that's built into this system right now. Ultimately though, this is a little bit more efficient and since this is a larger pocket of petroleum right here, it tends to be a little bit faster as far as how it can process. This one here runs at a complete 10 kilograms per second. And it has all of the same sort of sensors here, except for this one is now below 763 because it's a little bit farther down. Uh, that's the only difference here. This one also runs really good at 400 degrees Celsius right there on that sensor, so you don't really need to mess around with that too much. So the materials that are being used here are nothing fancy. We just have iron sensors, uh, the liquid pump is steel, and I think for the radiant pipe, I'm just using gold. I would say the most important thing though is this sensor right here at below 763. And also make sure that the liquid shutoff is very close to where your dripper is, because that way you get nice tight control about, of just how much crude oil is entering the system. So when we test a out of heat scenario right here, where we just let this thing cool to the point where it's no longer converting, you can see that this is going to run, run and run and run until the pressure is too much. And then at that point, everything's going to shut off. So you can see that that's running too much. Now the liquid shutoff is turned off and we're at 810 there. And once this pump finishes pumping out the rest of its stuff, then we will go and add more heat back to it. This sensor right here is just set to be above 10 kilograms. That way we run the liquid pump nice and efficient. Although when this thing is up and running, it constantly runs at its maximum rate anyhow. So there we go. We're gonna close that up. We'll bring the heat back up and we've converted that into petroleum and just like that, it started up again. But you can see the heat right here ended up at a rate around 396 degrees Celsius. But you can see the crude oil that's flowing in is at 350. So there's, there's plenty of leeway right there. All right, so I'm going to make this into a blueprint. I'll also make a blueprint of the smaller one down here. So I'll have a link to these blueprints in the description below. All right, dupes, let's get to work. Now, not only do we have to build this system over here, we also have to tap into my other oil reservoir, which is this guy over here. So I need a little bit of a ladder right there. Bloop. You can see that I installed the mod that lets me build over plants. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so for this, I'm just going to build the oil well, and that'll be right there. This is a fairly simple thing, just some mesh tile and bit. you're done. That's all I'm going to use this area for, so. I tell you what, it'd be a lot easier if I just go in right up here. So we will just build this door. So we're just going to build a door right here, and then we'll have natural gas and whatnot end up right there, and then the crude oil will just build up down here and we can pump it out. Not a big deal. Okay, so the output temperature of this oil well is 90 degrees Celsius, so I want to make sure that I'm using gold amalgam. And then, of course, we're going to have to ship that all the way from down here all the way over here. I'm just gonna use sandstone because I'm cheap. Just keep building. I just wanna make sure we jump over spots like this, otherwise the heat will find its way through. I found that out the hard way. That's why there's an insulated dial right there. Because uh, the shipping rail behind this was actually bringing regolith in. Matter of fact, why isn't that flowing? Dupes, what'd you do? What's going on, bud? Why is the regolith not flowing? You guys broke it. Oh, dupes. Crude oil <laughs> all the way over here. Gosh, that's a long pipe. The other spot I need to be careful of here is the output for this system up here because that magma is going to drip down and I don't want it to heat up the stuff inside the pipe and cause all kinds of issues. So I'm going to use a bridge right there. So we ship that crude oil all the way over here and then it's going to go in right down there. Now obviously we need to build this thing, so I just canceled some of the insulated tiles. Therefore the dupes can get in there and build everything they need to build. Now as far as powering this up, I actually have a heavy watt wire already right over here, so I could just go ahead and make use of that. Oops, I don't wanna make those out of gold. I wanna make that out of iron. Ah! And this is a good spot right there because it should just be a gas, not actually a liquid in that spot. Doesn't even matter though. There we go, there's the power in. So I might as well just bring the oil in in the exact same spot, just like that. Oh, that's what's happening. This door's opening. 
and magma is flowing from here over here, melting the conveyor rail. So what's the temperature of this thing? Oh, it's incredibly hot. Ah! So do I need to have this thing be able to flow out here, then flow over there and down? I don't know. I, I don't even know anymore. All right, there you go, dupes. <laughs> Every time I think I'm done with this, something else shows up. All right, there we go. So now the magma <laughs> that comes out of here can flow over here and then back down. Beautiful. Thank you. Although, can we unentomb our rocket, please? We've managed to melt stuff inside of the cargo bay. <sighs> oh my gosh. Look at all the shovels over here. There's like four of them there. There's a bunch more up here. One of them pooped on my solar panel and blew it up. Thanks, Voles. You're real nice. Hmm, who's on fire this time? Oh, just Randolph. But that's all right. You can head on over here, so long as you're damaged by 80%. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Light wounds, a little bit of scalding, and you head on over, there you go. Really good. You know what we should really do for this poor guy? Is we should allow his cooling system to run a little bit better. This is currently running crude oil. If we replace the crude oil with water, it would actually have, it would run a little bit better. Considering I'm just waiting for other stuff to happen at this point, it seems like a good project. All right, so we're just going to set up a liquid reservoir, maybe two. It might be, I might need two. I can bring the crude oil in here and pass it over there. I'm such a baller. I made all of this out of insulated ceramic. <laughs> I might have to readjust that for the blueprint. Uh, it should just be like insulated mafic or igneous rock. I just happen to have a lot of ceramic because I've spent the last 2,000 cycles stockpiling it. So I'll make that adjustment. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's going to be well insulated. Hey, hey, shipping rail thing. What are you doing? Why aren't you running? You need to run over here. My voles, Shovel the Ninth, they're hungry. Okay, I was just confused, that's all. <laughs> Whenever has this game been confused? So, if we just do this number real quick, we should be able to take this crude oil, start to store it up, and there we go. Using the pliers tools, <laughs> which is just fantastic. I'm going to disconnect that piece of the pipe, and we're going to replace it with hopefully polluted water once we re-enable this pump. So let's just take a look at the temperature overlay in this area, about 70 degrees down there. It's right around 60 some right here. It's never really been that nice for Drandolph. So this should hopefully be a nice upgrade for him. Wow, there's a lot of crude oil in this loop. Holy moly. Okay, so why is water more powerful than crude oil in a cooling loop? Well, it has to do with the specific heat capacity of the liquid. So the specific heat capacity of crude oil is 1.6 whereas water is 4.1. So as we move 10 kilograms through this little thermal aqua tuna right here, over and over and over again, uh, it's actually going to do quite a bit more work. So we will actually be able to get more cooling out of the same amount of power. Although you can see that we're kind of pumping a mixed bag here. We got a little bit of clean water and some polluted water. Mm, I didn't think there was that much clean water down there, but oh well, whatever. So now I'm just going to get rid of that little bridge right there. We'll let that water flow around. And as we can see right here, it's actually going into this aqua tuner. So what I want to do here is just snip this wire just for a little bit, since I have the tool available for me. Um, and we can actually just go ahead and put some of this water into the tank over there. That way we have a little bit of extra in this loop. So we can just build that up. This works good to kind of average the temperatures inside of there. Okay, so that's good. We have a little bit inside of there, a little bit of, um, 310, 150. So now this is flowing out over here, but it has nowhere to go. So we're just going to let that run just a little bit longer. And then we'll connect this up, which means we can go down here and just disable this pump again. Okay, so now we can see that we have this nice water in this cooling loop right here. So what we should see is that the temperature in this area is going to drop a little bit cooler than it was beforehand. Over time, that is. Uh, the one thing that I would like to kind of get rid of here is that I do have some spots that are just, they're not at 10 kilograms. So we're losing efficiency by simply not having that pipe full. So I think I might want to filter out just the clean water. Try to get just polluted water in there. 
Polluted water has a slight advantage over clean water because it will turn into steam at 119 degrees Celsius as compared to 100 degrees Celsius. Same thing with cooling. Um, it doesn't, it happens at negative 20 rather than zero. So polluted water is really good for like cooling loops and stuff like that, especially even if they're going to be interacting with water. It just has a wider working range but the same sort of specific heat capacity and all that stuff. Okay, so I have the liquid shutoff built. I should just be able to go in here and click water. And there we go, the water is now kicking out and the polluted water should be flowing in. This thing is still enabled, right? Nope. Oops, turn it back on. Okay, so that's going to run a little bit slim for a while, but we should end up with just polluted water in here. Fine spot, you made a mess. There's actually a new mod out that lets duplicates wait to use things like sinks and whatnot. I think that would actually work pretty good in my situation here. Otherwise, JB51 might have to be like moved. Unfortunately, I don't even know if you can actually do that. <laughs> the last time I deconstructed a memorial, their skeleton fell through the bottom of the earth. So, but I definitely need another lavatory. I feel like I've passed the point of just having too many dupes and not enough lavatories here. So let's tackle that as well. So we'll go ahead and deconstruct this and, and put in a third toilet. All right, let's take a look at this bathroom real quick. See the room overlay? Mm, okay, that's pretty good. Let's see if we can move JB51 over here so that we can put another toilet where he, he used to be. Oh, so that's interesting. They no longer have the remains of dupes when you go to deconstruct the memorial. It's just not there. They used to have a little skeleton that would drop out, but then it would fall all the way through everything to the bottom. So the little skeleton thing that used to pop out of there is no longer there. So it's almost like you could commit the perfect crime and make it look like you never had any issues. Hmm. Anyhow, we're going to put another lavatory in over here. I know, not the most exciting stuff. <laughs> that pipe connects to that pipe. And this pipe connects to that pipe. There you have it, Val. Now you are officially right next to the toilet. Rest in peace. All right, well, I think it's time for a new duplicate. Joshua's a mouth breather. Ugh, we don't like mouth breathers around here. A narcoleptic dupe is incredibly dangerous when you give them a jet suit. Probably going to avoid that one. So I think Lindsay here is going to be the dupe that we go with. However, your name is going to be Woogie. Woogie Woogie, welcome to the base. You can sleep right over... Over here. Man, that's a long list, isn't it? And if we take a look at the schedule, Woogie, you're going to... Wait, we've got four on that. Oh, well, I guess you're going to be down here. Too many duplicates. Woogie, I really don't know what you're going to do. Something. <laughs> Everybody gets a little bit of this and a little bit of that. <laughs> a little bit of this. There you go, bunch of new skills for all the dupes. Oh my gosh, look at all these pips. Pip union, look at them, they're uniting again. What are you doing, poke shell? How'd you even end up there? Holy lag! Oh! Eight frames, woo! Well, look at the temperatures, well, it's down to 55 degrees. Drandolf, you might be saved from continuously melting. And how are you doing, shovels? Hmm? Still hungry, apparently. How's the magma doing? It's just about to overflow. <laughs> okay. Um, as far as shipping is concerned, we really don't need really hot stuff. Iron ore should be just fine. But what I would like to do is only allow the heat to transfer if it's above a certain range, right? If we're above 400 degrees, then I would like the heat from this conveyor rail to go into this system up here. If it's below that, then I just want it to keep going going on by. I don't want to worry about it. You know, it can, it can go off and do steam or whatever. So I have to find a way to actually sense the temperature of the rail itself or the stuff in the rail. So I think one way I can do that is if I were to set up a sensor right here. So I will use insulation right down here, just like that. That way I don't disrupt the second line that runs right down here. And then that will be ceramic right there. And we could put a little liquid and a temperature sensor. So whatever liquid or, or gas or whatnot I put inside of here, that's going to tell me how hot this stuff is on the rail itself. Now I guess I, I, I don't really need that 
because I am controlling the temperature of the rail itself. But if I want to run the rail at a lower temperature, then this is what I'll need. So at this point, I can use doors to transfer off the rail here and into the diamond. Now, steel doors are, are a good option. I could do thermium. So I'm going to start with steel and see if I can get away without it. So there's kind of a double condition transferring thing that goes on here, right? If this is below 400 degrees, that door is going to be closed. But if this is below 400 degrees, then this door is going to be open. So only if I have more heat available and I still need heat, are both of these doors going to be closed and the heat is going to go out of this rail and into the crude oil and then petroleum. Yes, very automated. All right, since I need to build a lot of rail, I'm going to need a lot of iron ore. It's mostly, the, it's pretty much the cheapest thing and it's also high temperature resistant. So I'm going to dig into this area and tap into my uh, reserve of iron ore. So let's go ahead and go through this door right here and then start to dig that out. That is chlorine. So where do I want to go in? Probably just read. <laughs> uh oh, who's this? Woogie. Every new dupe starts off ultra slow, don't they? I mean, you could sweep some stuff up. Might as well do that while we kind of wait. <laughs> Is anybody using this lavatory? I set it up just for you. Aha, there we go. So there is a chance that they could actually slide past this sink. All right, so I let the game run a little bit here and we can see that we've just about completed all of this equipment down here. Just a few spots that we need to go in there and finish up the pipe. But this is about ready to be closed up and filled with crude oil. And if we take a look at the pipe here, we can see that it's running all the way over here, just like that. Now, in order for an oil well to run, we first need to start it up with some clean water because it consumes water at one kilogram per second. Luckily, we have a body of water right down here that I used to cool down the gold volcano, volcano a while ago. So I'm just going to drop a pump down here and pump the clean water up to there. However, I'll set up a petroleum generator over here after we get this thing up and running and that water will actually feed its way all the way back there. So it'll become a closed loop system running crude oil this way and then polluted water back that way. But we'll actually process the polluted water so that it'll become clean water. And we can do that by just converting it directly into steam right out of the machine. All right, so once again, we already have the power nearby because I'm just about to have my entire base encircled with this heavy watt conductive wire. I have more than enough iron to actually do so. I could just make a giant ring of it if I really wanted to. It's probably a pretty good idea. Anyhow, that stuff's ready to go. <laughs> this volcano is about to overflow, so I think I'm going to have to just dig that out real quick. Uh, I might even be able to go in here and dig some of this out, just kind of give this magma a little bit more space. I've got so much of it at the moment. There we go. We'll just dig that out. Thanks, Nicola. Be careful. <laughs> Night fire! Dude, you're dunking yourself in magma. Get ourselves a crispy dude. Just a few more tiles. You'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, okay, those ones are unreachable. Okay, so here's where sweep by type really comes in handy What I want to do is sweep up everything in here except for the ceramic because I want to use that ceramic to just rebuild these tiles So I want to sweep up the rest of this stuff in there Get it out of there and then use the ceramic to just build these tiles. So nice We'll see how that works. We can see Nicola here is doing exactly what I wanted him to do um, almost <laughs> Just building those ceramic tiles. I still want to get in there to sweep the stuff up, so just have to be careful of that. But essentially, that's what I want right there. Nightfire, buddy, if you dig this way, uh, it's going to be hard to get back. Come on. No, no. No. Move over here. There you go. Now dig. Aha! There we go. So now we have some petroleum over here. Just like that. Which means I can seal this up. And this will give me a nice sensor to determine just how hot the stuff is that's moving through the rail. So one of the nice things about this biome here is that I can go in here and I can auto harvest a lot of these pinch pepper plants. So long as I don't, you know, mess them up or anything like that, they'll be a nice good resource for me for a long time. I also allow duplicates to run through this door. Uh, it just, it's a lot faster to build the stuff over here. So I try to use the Atmos suits as much as possible in this area 
because they can travel faster than doing the jet suits from over here. Okay, so I've got bigger plans for the shipping rail rather than just going right here and back. But I think for today, I'm just going to start this up by just building the rails this far out. So we have several of them. I might as well just go ahead and just do this number. But I think the only ones I'm actually going to connect today are going to be this right here like that. Or I suppose another thing I could do is this number here. But there's really no point in, in doing that. Okay, so what I want to have down here is a loader. And then I can use a couple of different bridges to actually load up this rail or that rail. Uh, and I'm going to load them with diamond. So I could say I will load this one, and then I can even do this number right here and just put it right there. Um, and then this very, very small conveyor rail right here. We'll load up these with diamond uh, whenever there's a space of spot available. Look at all these dupes go. We're building rails, we're building all the pipes and everything. Good job. These dupes are actually so much more efficient when I run the game at normal speed. <laughs> oh well, it's what it is, I guess. One small puzzle remains of how I'm actually going to open this up. If I was thinking ahead, I probably would have put a door there, but I wasn't. <laughs> so now I've got all of this magma right here. Mm, nothing to do with it. There we go, let's load this up with diamond and we'll get the shipping rail up and running. Okay, so here's how I think I can tackle this. We pretty much just have a complete vacuum up here. I mean, we have just tiny, tiny bits of carbon dioxide. But I think we can go in here and we can deconstruct this and the dupes will most likely use the Atmos suits to do this. And then we can build some ladders right down here, kind of destruct my way down to the bottom, change this out with an airflow tile, replace this ladder with an airflow tile, and then insulate my way back out. That's my current plan. So there we go, all carnage is over there, just deconstructing it, excellent. All right, so now that's open. Um, we're going to deconstruct both of those. That will be a steel tile, and we're going to make obsidian ladders right there. Nicola, don't pump this full of gas. Come on now, don't do that. Ugh, he did. Okay, so there we go, that was built. Ooh, cancel that. So now I want to deconstruct this building and that one, and this building and that one. It's gonna bring this magma into here and kind of connect the two things together. Woo, kind of toasty. Okay, now level nine, let's go ahead and build that airflow tile right back there, and this one as well. Alrighty, good deal. One more tile and we're pretty much sealed up right there. Very nice. Okay, so all of this stuff is just about built over here. Just a few more pieces. Uh, <laughs> sweep this one piece of Mavic rock up, please. Tell you what, we'll, we'll put a door on the end of this thing. There you go, just in case. Now, how are we doing with the pump system over here? Mm, we got a liquid pump. That has not been built yet. What about water flowing? Mm, we have the pipe built, but again, the liquid pump has still not been built. These dupes do not like to build pumps, apparently. And just when I say that, <laughs> Arcturus is like, hey, I'm gonna supply gold amalgam for that pump. You heard me, didn't you? Thank you. Magma! Yes! <laughs> it's got so much of it, it's actually flowing into space. Shh, don't tell anybody, alright? They'll think it's wasteful. But I literally just have too much magma now. It isn't that I have too much magma, it's that I'm not making use of anything. I wonder how many hatches I'm going to be able to feed after I get all this up and running. Probably none, because I won't have any frames left. Alright. You. Chunk of mafic rock. I surrender. You're never going to be swept. And for these pieces of wire, please. Thank you. What do we have going on over here? Aha! So close. A little bit more, Mr. Spaghetti. Over here, a bottle emptier. This is where all the crude oil that's been just laying around my base forever. That's just going to dump into here. <gasps> there we go! It's running! This is actually running in the opposite direction that I thought it'd go. But uh, no, no, it's gone. So there we go. The diamond is now on the rail. Here, we'll slow it down a little bit. <laughs> so it's only at 72 degrees now, but by the time it ends up over here, boom, thousand degrees. So what we should be seeing here is as we heat up this 
current amount of diamond, we're actually going to take some of that heat out. For now, I'm just going to set this to a safe temperature of, let's say, 200. Right, extra low. But you can see the temperature of the doors are going down. 1,040, it's now 1,030, and it just keeps dropping and dropping as we heat up this shipping rail right here. And it's also going to be heating up this little chunk of petroleum and that door. Maybe it'd be a good idea to have this be metal right there instead of a insulated ceramic. I don't know. And I do have a lot of petroleum in that spot. I might have put too much in there. There is one easy way to empty out most of that petroleum, although it <laughs> would just turn into sour gas in an instant, wouldn't it? Well, let's try it. We're going to change that to a metal tile. No, 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 no. We're going to change it to a window tile because it's only 100 kilograms. Yes, see? Right when we did that, some of that petroleum fell out and then kind of splashed down here, turning into sour gas. Mmm. Destroying my conveyor loader. Probably. Damage, it's now overheating. Fantastic. Oh, man! Seven frames, eight frames. Oh, I don't think it likes this, but there you go. Okay, so for right now, I'm going to get rid of these conveyor bridges. And I think I'm going to get rid of the conveyor loader. It's unfortunately, it's just overheating. Um, so I'm going to let this cool down. It should cool down from all of this oxygen over here eventually, as, as the rest of this finds its way into space and goes away. But we can see that the conveyors are now loaded, so that's great. We can also detect the temperatures here. We can see that it's currently about 600 or so degrees. You can see that the actual diamond is right around 700, so I'll have to figure that number out. Until we actually get crude oil in here, I'm going to leave this at below so that this door remains open and we don't do anything with it. I'll only set that once we kind of have this primed. But as we can see right here, we are bringing in that crude oil. So that's really good. Of course, now I have to watch my own video to figure out <laughs> what number I should be looking for here. Come on, me. Show me what the number is. 763. Okay. Good deal. Let's bring in the crude oil, which is now flowing. We can see if we take a look at this overlay. Yes, look at all of that crude oil. Excellent. And this is all crude oil. From anywhere in the base, you could just find your way right over here, dump it in. Perfect. I will put a filter on this once we kind of get this thing up and running, but for right now, it's not needed. Uh, there's a lot of other equipment I want to build inside of here, such as a gas pump, natural gas generator, that sort of thing. So if this is below 763, then that's going to flow in. Well, actually, I tell you what, now that I already have some crude oil out of this, I'm going to go ahead and build this liquid filter right now. So what I'm going to look for is water. If I find water, I'm going to kick it out. Otherwise, crude oil is going to be the only other liquid in here. Okay, so now that I have a good amount of crude oil down here, let's just go ahead and flip this from below to above. And we're going to start to transfer some of that heat from down here into that crude oil, hopefully turning it into petroleum. So watch what happens here. Boom, look at that heat flow through there. Excellent. So what we should be seeing here is the temperature continues to drop on these airlocks while the heat over here continues to go up and up and up. So the other thing I'm keeping an eye on here is the diamond temperature right here and its relationship to this sensor. So this sensor is actually downstream of the conveyor rather than upstream of it, which might be, uh, that might just simply be incorrect and I want to move it from one spot to the other because I'd really like to know what this temperature is and that's coming out of these doors. So the other thing I could do here is flip the bridges so that it actually runs the other direction. That would be the easy fix. Although being downstream might actually be a good thing too, because if this goes below 400 degrees, then I know that I'm pulling energy out of here and back into the rail. And if I'm doing that, well, then I don't actually want to do that, right? So I want this door to open up and to cut off the transfer of energy um, from my petroleum up here out. Where are you getting cooked? Oh, of course. Inside of here. It's usually the case, isn't it? I like that I'm running the game at slow and getting 12 frames per second. <laughs> Anyhow, um, what we can see here is this thing is now converting um, crude oil into petroleum. Awesome. 
That's exactly what I wanted to see. Perfect. So the temperatures down here are hot enough, or shall we say just hot enough, to convert that. It's going to dance around for a little bit until you build up enough, but looks like it's doing pretty good. Kind of curious at why it's doing what it's doing. Okay, there you go. There we go. We can see that we're at 400 degrees, and therefore we dropped below that sensor, so now more crude oil is going to drop in. So now the process has really started. And I might want to set this number a little bit higher just to start things up, maybe 405. Hey, there we go. Now the petroleum is flowing from here all the way to the right. That's moving a lot of heat down here. Perfect. So just like that, all of this petroleum has made its way from here and it's just about to the pump. But as we can see here, it's still kind of cold, 70 degrees. So there we go. We can now see that we are pumping petroleum out. So the high temp for petroleum is 538. After that, it turns to sour gas, which is something we don't want to happen. So I've set this sensor to be below 520 degrees right now. So in another 25 degrees of temperature drop over here, we will open up these doors. And we're going to bring in our next uh, pulse of magma. Now in the future, I hope to have some steam turbines over here that are actually pulling some heat out of these doors a little bit faster when it's at this temperature. That way I'm really not relying on trying to get it out with the petroleum because this is a really slow process. There's just not a lot of temperature difference at this point. So once the igneous rock falls down here, we'll actually ship that um, into the steam turbine area as well. And that's where we'll handle the last tail end of that heat. So it'll make it in there via two different ways, the shipping rail and actually just being directly shipped into the steam chamber. So we can now see the inlet temperature is starting to go up. We're up to about 300 degrees. Once we get this thing up and running as fast as it'll go, that'll be right around 350 degrees. So we still have a little ways to go before this thing is really efficient. But what we can see here is it's starting to move a little bit faster now. Each pulse is moving quite a bit more liquid, so. All right, so here we can see the petroleum flowing out. It's actually doing a pretty good job considering how cold this is. I mean, this is only at 500 degrees down here, so it's still moving that much petroleum. It's pretty awesome. That's the real benefit of having this counterflow system here, is we do a lot of the work by just bringing in the cold stuff over here and letting it heat up and getting a lot of our energy back. So it doesn't take quite as much effort to really heat that stuff up. Not only that, we have a decent amount of mass right here that we've already built up. So here's where things get really, really interesting. This here is about to open up. We've reached our low limit, 520 degrees. So at this point, we're going to see all of this stuff drop down and then it moves off to the right and then it moves off to the right again. Okay, so now we should see that this top door here is going to open up and let in more magma. If that's 520, that is. So there we go, more magma's flowing in. We can see that we're going to shut that down. And all of that heat's already made it into the doors. So then it's going to drop down here and this is where all that transfer's happening. So just like that, the conveyor rail is back up to 670 degrees. And you can see that this thing, it's starting to move. So just like that, yes. You can see that it opens up, it closes. It's just really controlling the temperature down there and that just keeps this liquid shutoff running, which means we're just moving more and more petroleum through this. The temperatures that we're seeing going into this are 350. The one thing I'm seeing here is that I can't keep up. I'm processing, I don't have enough crude oil to keep up with this system down here. So at this point, we're processing as much crude oil as I can throw at it. Awesome, so there we have it. A tank full of potential power and it's at 140 degrees Celsius, nice. All right, great. Now we can see that we've got the petroleum boiler up and running. It's doing its thing, but now we need to turn a lot of this into power and other resources as well. So that'll have to happen here in the next episode. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode here of Oxygen Not Included. Thanks for watching. If this looks like the channel for you, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. Stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar out.